All right, this is Stephen Williams, president and founder of CreditRepairShop.com. Here's a YouTube question. It has, uh, and it said, uh, greetings, Mr. Williams. I hope you and the family are doing well, sir. Thank you, and thank you, sir. We are doing well. Thank you for, uh, for that. And your question is, I've heard of instances where someone has been sued and never knew they were being sued. Is that is the case? Are those companies able to still get judgments against someone? That would seem un unfair if the person is unable to respond or fight back uh, because they're unaware of that they're even being sued. Uh, yeah, this happens a lot. This happens a lot, and uh, I'm gonna. This is something that I actually uh, happened to me uh, from another state. Now, I was aware that I was being sued, but I was unaware that they were doing it in another state. So, like, I was waiting and waiting and waiting, and uh, and then uh, actually, this was for a, another company that I was part of, and um, they were suing the, the company, but also was suing the individuals that were with the company. And uh, it ended up being where they got the lawsuit in California. I never lived in California. And uh, and then they did what's called a foreign judgment over to my state. And it was like, I didn't even know about this. And I was in neighbor like, uh, you only have a certain period of time that you can open, you know, that you can reopen it. And it's past that period of time. Now, for let's just say for uh people who are living in the state they're trying to find you uh let me tell you what they had, what what they're required to do is that if first they have to send to the last known address and if that doesn't get forwarded to the individual they're able to move forward with the lawsuit with that because all they have to do is try to prove service the other thing that the judge might make them do and they usually do require this is that you have to put it in a and it's, it is in there. It's in every daily newspaper. So regardless, uh, any lawsuits that are uh, coming out, people that are going to be sued civilly, those are published in the daily papers. So they believe with combination of you, you know, even though people don't even get the daily paper anymore, many people don't, uh, especially the younger generation, so they're expecting you to potentially become aware from it being published in, a, in the daily paper and then uh, potentially if it could be forwarded over from uh, last known address. Uh, and, and then here's a problem with, with that is that some of the times they'll have a servicer go there and then if you're not at that address uh, and no one knows your last address, uh, they will try to mail it, and then if it, when it comes back, this is all that they need to go ahead and go to court and proceed. Now, the, in some states, uh, it's very uh, touch and go, but in some states, once you become aware, so you, let's just say that, you know, years from now, you, you they got the default judgment, and years from now, you end up where you find out, say you go try to buy a house or do something, and you're like, there's this judgment that I got. Well, in some states, in some states, it is rare, but in some states, they will allow you to reopen. It, but you got to have a good, very, very good reason. Uh, it better be a very good reason because the, and there was one that we had just did. Uh, I don't have it on my desk here, but there was one that we had just submitted, uh, drew up the paperwork. Uh, for the customer to submit to the court and it had on there uh, like there's only like two things that will get it reopened the first one is if you were not served and it's within the time frame like in our state of Wisconsin you got six months and you better do it uh, but there is another one and I don't know if it's with other states but I know with Wisconsin is that they have a box and uh, I wish I would have knew this uh, for the one that had happened to me years ago. Uh, but we're talking more than 25 years ago. But that it, the, the, if you have evidence that would uh, potentially make the judgment not even be valid, 
they have a box on that. And I believe that if your state has that or any state has that in where you would say it's not where I'm just trying to get back in the court and to try to, uh, you know, go through the process and, and argue uh, my side for the judgment, even though it's potentially a judgment that you're going to, that would be able to continue because you're going to have to, you know, they're going to, the proof is going to still be the same and the judge is going to allow it. But with that other uh, box where it would, you have evidence where it, you would not, uh, this judgment would not have been approved as you, if you were aware of it. And in this uh, client's case that I'm speaking of, it was for a uh, private school. He and his wife are divorced and it ended up where the, a judgment was put in against his ex and him. And then when we were reviewing the paperwork and he was like, I never signed for my kid to go to this school. I never signed any financial documents or anything. And I, and, and I was like, okay, well, you know, you need, you know, if you're serious about this and you don't want to have this 8,000 go to you in a judgment, well, it's already a, def a, a default judgment because his ex didn't show up, but now they were looking at garnishing his money too. And I said, you need to go to that school. You need to have him give you the documents. And it was crazy when he got the documents. I had looked at them and it showed where his wife or ex had DocuSign for the school. But for his spot, it just had his name and it had a blank. It was, he never signed. He never signed any financial responsibility. He really never signed that he even knew his child was going to that school so those are the types of ways that you can get it reopened but yes to answer your question i do not think that it's fair but the way that the court had the way that the the laws have been written because you know the people who write the laws are the people who are in the business not the people who are not in the business and just like the how the law is written for a debt collector if they try to uh, contact you about a debt and you don't respond that gives them permission legally to put that information on your credit reports you would think that it would maybe be the other way that you know they had to make some type of communication with you but they actually don't so i'm going to end the video here hope that answered your question if you need help with your credit please visit us at the credit repair shop.com watch the video what makes us different if you can follow our process we invite you to become a customer if you need your credit reports and scores go to the website your the number three scores.com get those reports and scores review them look in the comments everything because that could be your uh way out of the you know out of a situation that you thought was uh there was no way out of uh, if you need the statute of limitations letter, you need the debt validation letter or the cease and desist collection activities letter, those letters are always free. Links are below this video. Thank you for your time. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com.